So I went on a bit of a mad spending spree and I wanted to upgrade my Nintendo 64. First of all, from using standard composite and also from using this controller. So I went ahead and got a couple of things and I'm gonna go through my configuration and what way I've all set it up. The test case in this scenario is going to be GoldenEye 007 because during a stream recently, I came to the realization is Jesus, this is blurry now. And now I know you can play this on the Nintendo Switch, but this is for folks really who want to play on original hardware. And I suppose to get the best image quality out of their original Nintendo 64. Bear in mind some uh, scenarios here as well to be clear on. I have a PAL console, so this is specifically for PAL region consoles, the way I have this configured and set up. So a couple of things I went and invested in. First of all, I got wanted to get new controls because I struggled with the uh, stick, especially with um, FPS games, in particular GoldenEye. So I went ahead and got the Brawler 64. So let's start with that first, before I go into any of the image quality and everything else. And I will do some comparisons as we get in to the video. So first of all, I want to talk about this controller. And I've used third-party controllers previously for the Nintendo 64. But this is by far the best one I've ever used. And that is no exaggeration. And there's a couple of reasons why. I think the design really feels more like an Xbox Series X or Xbox One controller. I think the C-Stick is the best thing about this. The movement and how smooth it is in motion is just way beyond what the C-Stick is able to do now. The other thing is the positioning of the controller itself. So naturally on a C-Stick, and especially if I'm playing uh, FPS games, I would naturally hold it like this and use a C-Stick for motion and um, access the other buttons here. Now I normally never really use these, especially for FPS games, but all those depended on the game. So that was a natural holding position of the controller before starting using the Brawler 64. And now it's just naturally like this. Well, the layout of where the buttons are is what's equally impressive here as well. Now I know there's a couple of things that I'll get into in detail when we actually go ahead and play GoldenEye, but a couple of things as well is even pressing those buttons, uh, great feel to them. Uh, it doesn't feel cheap, I think is the most important thing as well. It does not feel cheap at all. It feels like a legitimate Nintendo product or something of that high quality. Um, again, can't get over the C-Stick and how uh, smooth it is in motion. Even the D-pad is very, very responsive. It's also got a memory slot. Now, my understanding is you won't be able to use the rumble packs with this controller, but you can save your games with your memory pack here. Now, that's the controller. So secondly, what I want to do is I want to talk about the video setup here. So the very, very first device that I got is the Eon Super 64. Now, again, this is the PAL region one. And there is an NTSC one, but again, I'm connecting it to a PAL console. The supposed idea and selling point behind this is that it upscales and like slightly reduces the jaggy edges on the image. So, but I found it was a case-by-case -case basis with certain games, but boy, does it make a huge difference with GoldenEye, and I'll get into that in a moment. So that's the first device I'm gonna use. The second device I'm using is the M Classic. So again, it's kind of a upscaler, and the, the thing is, I'm nearly layering in the Aeon 64 Plus into the M Classic, uh, making a double connection here, essentially. The, the thing to note about the M Classic is it has two modes. It has a, a mode middle toggle, and I actually show you at the back here, the box. Uh, basically, you either turn the processing on or off. If you have it off, you won't actually get an image, is what I've noted when using it on the N64. Processing is on, and they also have a retro mode. And what's in the retro mode is, is in fact, it forces a 4-3 aspect ratio. So I found the best results was enabling the slick mode by toggling this button on and uh, setting this also to retro mode. So it keeps the 4-3 aspect ratio locked and then it kind of adds the post-processing effects of both devices connected together. Uh, th just another point to note is you do need external power for the M Classic, which can be a little bit awkward and I would have preferred if we didn't have to do that. However, yes, a point to note, it does need that e additional external USB power. And this really goes straight into the N64 itself. 
So this is going to go straight in to the N64 at the back here, like so. And then your external power will go up here. And there's another point to note as well is because it's, it extends the length of the N64. So just bear in mind that if you, if you are deciding to get something like this, as you want some additional space in the back of that cabinet, especially if you're going to be connecting. And bear in mind, you have to connect your HDMI cable to your actual TV out uh, here. If you can see that there. So it's going to extend it a lot more. So that was kind of awkward. I wish there was some other way we could have done that. But anyway. Uh, so basically the comparison on the video uh, will show, I'm going to show some uh, video footage of the second level in GoldenEye and I will do both this and this and you will see the drastic level of difference uh, in the image quality. And I notice in particular in regards to the distance of um, noticing objects and enemies and GoldenEye being infinitely blurry as well from, from, from what I what I played now from what I remember um, definitely much more blurry than I, than I recall um, and the last thing as well is I will be using the Brawler 64 controller so I will be using this guy as well and I will also talk through uh, the best settings between the controls and the image quality within the game so let's uh, get into the actual footage Okay, I think the best way to showcase this is as follows. So you'll be able to see follow the controller and also follow the game itself. I'm just going to adjust the volume output on the game so you can hear me. And the footage you're seeing here is a composite, so AV, so standard AV connection. And I think even showcasing the intro sequence. Um, and I'm going to do this and then I'm going to swap over to the, I suppose, upgraded uh, visuals, if we're going to call them, with the M Classic plus the uh, Eon Super 64. And let, I just even let this play first before I even do a level and we swap over. And the other things as well is I go through the control configuration after, I suppose, I, I show the initial footage um, of both uh, video outputs, let's say. So you can see here, even on the intro, it's quite muddy, quite blurry, and the image is actually quite dark. I've made no adjustments here, just to be very, very clear. I'll just skip in for a moment. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start a level here. Let's do facility is always a good one, always a memorable one. Pick secret agent, and I'm going to start. And again, what you'll immediately notice with the composite is that kind of blur at a distance, everything seems extremely blurry to me. There is a higher level of contrast I've noticed uh, with the composite, uh, maybe compared to the upgrade, if, if that makes sense. I will show you folks what I mean in a moment. Let's just drop down here first. So I've, there's a couple of settings as well I've enabled in the visual settings. So got these guys here. So yeah, I, as I was streaming this, so I was struggling at the last time I was streaming. Everyone was getting a good laugh. But yeah, I mean, it's so much better with this controller. Uh, but I'll get into that detail shortly. Let's get just move out of here. I think I want to go into the main hall and then I'm going to swap over to the uh, other visuals, let's say. I think this was a good. This here was in particularly the change was drastic for me. Looking down this corridor, I'm gonna take these guys out. Yeah. So see the way it's very very blurry, even the further into the distance, and it nearly kind of almost um, grays out the image. It's very very even hard to make out the very very the end of the hall if there's actually anybody there at all. So now I'm going to swap over and just do that little segment again. Uh, but before I do that, I do want to show some of the settings I have for the controller. So I've switched look up, down to up, right. I've turned on auto aim and I switched the aim control from hold to toggle because I found hold um, to be problematic because it, it brings the dead zone center to the uh, controller once you let go of this C stick here. And the other things for the actual image quality itself, I set the screen to full 
and the ratio to normal. So let's swap, so just picture this image here and I will do some crossfades of these images so that you can clearly see. Picture this and uh, let's swap over to the other one. So let's try this again. This is now our upgraded visuals, our M Classic combined with our Aeon 64 Plus, Super 64 I mean. And uh, again, I've not touched any of the actual video capture settings. This is the image as it is coming in as it would be on your TV. The thing about the uh, Super 64 is that it takes an S video quality image and then it upscales it from there. And then we're obviously adding the second layer of upscaling with the M Classic. And uh, if you can notice the difference straight away on the intro, uh, even the text seems much clearer to me. Uh, even if you can see the starring James Bond, da da da, etc., you're looking closely at both the text and the actual uh, models of the characters themselves. They're much vastly improved. So again, let's go into the main menu. Even if you note on the main menu, it's so much clearer to me. And um, even reading the select mission, I'll just go back to that. And uh, let's pick facility and agent secret agent. To me, this is as clear as it's ever been. And I suppose once we start this level, you will realize uh, the difference. And especially in that corridor I mentioned. So let's move forward again. And I'm almost, as well when I'm playing this, it's it's more fluid. It's as if the, I wouldn't say the performance has increased, but the response times, it's just much, so much better. Um, drop down here. Like even looking at the character models there, it's way better. This guy should be dead. Yes, he is. And I always find this area in particular just showed me how good the quality was in regards to the image. Whoa, and I blew shit up there. What the was that? I wish the smoke would go away. Let's grab the armor real quick. Smoke is still hanging around. But if you just look clearly at the distance, at the draw distance of the image, to me this seems so much clearer. Um, all the jaggy seem to be have eliminated somewhat. Uh, just the character models themselves. This guy, in, I'll go in here actually as well. If you just look closely at this guy. I, th I genuinely do feel that the image has been drastically improved. Again, I'll just back up here. I think this is where I was previously. Come on, take this guy out. There we go. And just, I just stand here for a moment. I think this is where I roughly was the last time. I'm gonna crossfade these images as I'm speaking because I'm recording and capturing at the same time. Uh, yeah, but I just think it's hugely improved. Uh, let's use the key card that I got. I'm going to proceed on because now I want to talk about the um, as you're watching the upgraded visuals, let's say um, I want to talk about the controls really quick. So as I mentioned this C-Stick, now I turned off the uh, kind of dead zone locking, uh, which you'd, I mentioned earlier if I just go into my settings uh, for the controls. Uh, it's the switch look up down. I've showed this already in the video, but just let's do it again. Um, ensuring that this is at upright and the aim control is toggle and i'm just finding that the c-stick is just perfect for that because it's it's given a natural aim to it um, rather than the kind of jumpy fiddly kind of over it i suppose over movement of the of the c-stick um especially when it it, it re realigns to center every time you let go of the c-stick if that makes sense um, even strafe, things like strafing just so much easier as well because it's just in a natural position here with these uh, C buttons um, from left to right instead of putting my hand from here to here if that makes sense on the uh, original controller. Let's uh, make some noise here, we're going to switch out to the AK. Try not to kill this guy. Get this guy instead. There's going to be a ton of them coming after me here. I'm just going to try and go forward real quick. There's going to be a dude here. Just go through and just going to ignore them all. 
You know, I have to press the button to open the door. I have to go in there. This will be a real test of the visuals. Perfect here. Just to showcase this. I better not fucking die. Shoot them. Oh, don't die. I'm dead. No. Classic hapes. Anyway, that's kind of a showcase of the Brawler 64 combined with the visual upgrades of the M Classic and the Aeon Super 64. I genuinely feel this is vastly improved, uh, both from controls and visuals. So you can, with, uh, I'll be honest, uh, a fair few pounds spent, definitely upgrade your Nintendo 64 experience. Um, I know there's alternates you can do, you know, you can get the original um, N64 controller that now works with the Switch and you could play it through Nintendo Switch Online if you wish, whatever. Uh, for me, I want to play it on original hardware um, and this was an absolutely brilliant upgrade. Uh, I'm really glad I did it. So, Anyway, if folks enjoyed this and if you're new to the channel, please consider liking and subscribing. Uh, drop a comment down below, let me know what you think and uh, yeah. I'll talk to you soon. Thanks for watching, guys.